Welcome to T-Bone's Best of Roanoke Show. Music, comedy, and conversation featuring HB. The Honey Badger. Honey Badger don't care. Now, on with the show. Something is lost, you search high and low, look up and down, where did it go? I'll search like the kids and the dog in the book, I know that I'll find it as long as I look. If I have faith like a mustard seed when I work, wait and believe before too long. Radio Free Roanoke, and this is episode 138, T-Bone's Best of Roanoke Show, HB. We have three, three very special guests with us here today. We have the author of the new children's book, The Seed and the Song, Joy Sylvester Johnson, on the phone with us right now, and right here with us in the Venton Library, we have the illustrator of the book, The Seed and the Song, Mary McConnell, and... We have one of the stars of the That's book, right. The Seed in the Song, Lily, Lily, the dog. Yes. So, hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, Joy, let's start with you. You know, there's a lot here we want to unpack about your book and all the story there. But, uh, you know, the, the, there's a saying that there's at least one book in all of us. Um, so I want to ask you, have you ever written any books before? And uh, what was the seed, pardon the pun, for you writing this book? Well, actually, this is my second book. My first one I wrote when I was 17 years old, and it was called Hinges. And I did it to raise money to buy all the hinges in the new rescue mission building. So that's what drove it. And it was just a collection of little sayings that um, did really well and did pay for all the hinges in the new building. So this book, actually, I didn't write for the public. I wrote for my own grandchildren. Because I think it's really important for us to talk about important things Mm -hmm. with our grandchildren. And I think the study of scripture is very important. And I think living into the gospel is very important. And so I wanted to pick one of the parables and write a story about it in a way that the kids could see at a very young age how you can apply the principles that we learn in the parable of the mustard seed. Mm -hmm. So I wrote that book as a gift to my grandchildren. And it wasn't until years later when I was trying to figure out how I could help the Mercy Care Academy in Kenya, that's located in Mathari Valley, how I could help them to um, increase the number of students that they're able to help. They're in one of the poorest sections of the world the kids actually live in a garbage dump and yet we've got this little primary school there that needed to add two more levels of education and I wanted to help that and it occurred to me that maybe since other people seem to enjoy the seed in the song and my grandchildren seem to enjoy the seed in the song maybe the public would like to have an option to get it as well so all the proceeds from the sale of the seed in the song go to the new Mercy Care Academy in Mathari Valley Kenya So that's how it came to be, and that's why we're talking today, because we are getting ready to launch the sale of this book, and all the proceeds will benefit the the Mercy Care Academy in Mathari Valley, Kenya. Yes, ma'am. So you have a very noble purpose there uh, behind this book, and I've got it here right here in our hands, and it's just a nice size book, beautifully illustrated, very colorful, and uh, well done. Tell me a little bit about the characters. Uh, I know there's Jillian. She's five years old. She's got a brother and a sister. You know, it's always interesting when you have a book where you uh, have some type of quest or journey. So give us a little overview of what, what takes place in this book. Well, the personalities of the three kids actually are reflections of the personalities of my first three grandchildren. Ah. At the time I wrote the book, I only had three grandchildren. Now I have seven. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to have to write another book. A sequel, um, Joy. Yeah. <laughs> but what's really interesting to me is Eli and Emmy are actually twins, and their personalities are, are really picked up in this book, and they, this year, are going off to college, so it's been a while. And then Julian 
is starting high school. So I'm just um, really excited to see the people that they've turned out to be. Mm. But I can still see the personalities that we see in the book in their characters. So I think one of the most exciting things for me about the book is that they treat each other in the book the way they actually treat each other in real life. And so you see Emmy as sort of the take charge, know it all person. And you see Eli as the one who's really empathetic, but not always quite sure what to do. And then of course, Jillian was the baby at the time and the baby just wants things to be fixed. And when she's unhappy, she lets everybody know about it. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Well, very good. And, you know, uh, you found a, uh, someone to illustrate the book, and that's Marion here, Marion McConnell. So tell us, how, how did you come across her? Well, Marion and I worked together at the rescue mission, and I had retired, and then she was retiring. And she was talking about what she was planning to do after retirement. And I had been looking for an illustrator for a long time. And I said, Marion. Have you ever thought about illustrating a children's book? She said, well, actually, I have. I, that's something I want to do. In fact, I've, I've illustrated one, but it didn't actually turn out. They never actually published it. I said, well, I have a book that I really want to see published, and I need an illustrator, so why don't we work on it together? And at the time, we thought it would take us about three months. Um, <laughs> three months? <laughs> well, you finish it in two months, huh? <laughs> oh. we, we found out that um, the, the, I think the reason we were such a good team is I had ideas in my head, but I didn't know how to put them on paper. Marion was wonderful at listening to the ideas and then coming up with possible solutions. And then she would draw what she heard. And then the next step was really important. She would feed it back to me and I would critique it in a, in a way to try to make it better. And rather than being defensive and, um, getting her feelings hurt about critique, she embraced it. And so we both agreed that every time we both critiqued the writing of the story and the drawing of the illustrations, the critique from both of us made it better. Oh, so a real true partnership. Is yeah. that is that how you remember it, Marion? It sure is. <laughs> and I've always admired and respected Joy. And I, I loved the story and the message. So I'll never, ever try to do something I, my heart doesn't feel good about. So I, I knew the story was wonderful, um, and I knew I knew Joy and I could work well together. And, and there's a synergy that comes about when you're creative people where mm -hmm. one plus one sometimes will equal three mm -hmm. because there's a third thing that comes out. And really with all the, the adventures we had in this quest to bring her story to life and, for example, adding Lily, uh, my dog Lily, who is here today. Yeah, um, Lily. So, uh, you know, and dogs are such a, uh, a source of unconditional love and, and a lot of children are drawn to, to, to dogs and animals and whatever. Yes. Kind of adding her uh, and then learning about how to bring things to light during the whole COVID issue because I had children kind of lined up that I wanted to get to pose for different facial expressions and stuff. But with COVID, you didn't really, nobody really wanted to get together in person. So we had to be really creative about that too. But it all, you know, God finds a way and the seed was planted and we tended it and weeded it and did all the things well. it takes to make something <laughs> come alive and and boom, here it is. Yeah. 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 And tell us, uh, let's give a, 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 a acknowledgement to the cover of the book. It's a wonderful cover of a little girl, Jillian, and the dog, Lily. But mm -hmm. uh, who was the model for uh, So we Grace. had all the inside <laughs> pictures ready, and we were really happy with them all. But just there's something I kept trying to, we kept trying different covers, and it just didn't, didn't excite us. And then um, one of my dear, dear friends, from working at the VA, which I did for 39 years, um, Susie, her daughter, Jennifer, was my daughter's best friend, Molly's best friend, and she had grown up and had three little kids of her own. She just happened to have a daughter named Grace, who was the same age, had the same kind of spunk and, mm -hmm. and, and beauty and spirit of Jillian, and so I took 
took Lily over and we and Grace and Lily hit it off and I took a ton of pictures and one of those just when I looked at it I said that's the one yeah. and so there it's it's actually a little girl named Grace who has posed with Lily on the cover and then we added the mustard seed plants and and a bird birds figure a lot in in this story as well and it just it was just the right one it was the I, right think one. Mary, I think Marion has really um touched on something very important this book would not exist without the help of many many people in this community mm -hmm. just all kinds of things um people step forward to do with us and for us to bring this book to where it is and the addition of lily i must say if you read the book carefully and if you look at the illustrations carefully oftentimes lily is a step ahead of the humans and I find that to be true in real life. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. my dog, Tata, is way ahead of me in terms of figuring something out. Well, Lily is very, very polite. She's right here. Yeah, she's um, a sweetheart. Sweetheart. What what kind of dog again is she, Mary? So she is a pit terrier mixed mutt. She is a rescue that we happened upon when my husband and I were riding motorcycles in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas. She mm -hmm. had been abandoned there, and mm -hmm. even though we had a pack packed not to adopt yet another dog in our advanced years, she changed our minds. And there's all kinds of stories, which that was the story I had started on, Lily to the Rescue, when Joy and I met. And she said, well, you can't do that book till you help me with my book. And so, yeah. First things <laughs> so that, first. That's fine. So, um, and it has been a wonderful learning, growing experience uh, on how to, to put a book into this hardback, beautiful cover, because mm -hmm. um, Joy had the story, I mm -hmm. had the art, we had everything kind of ready, Joy found a printing company, but what we learned was between having it ready and getting a printing company to print it, there's a whole process that involves formatting, and it's very technical, and it, it involves all kind of strange terms like bleeding <laughs> and this and that, and we were kind of in a panic, and this is another one of those stories about a, a road angel along the way, because she was contacting people, I was contacting people, and finally with my, my background with writing books about caves, I contacted the national editor of the Caving Magazine. I said, do you know anybody can, who do this? Mm -hmm. He said, well, my wife Elizabeth does it. Mm, what the <laughs> and so hell? we were able to to um, hire her and Elizabeth was fantastic and she got it to the point between her and myself and Joy to actually be ready for printing. So. Okay. Now Joy, uh, let me tell you a little story. Uh, as a five or six year old myself, I can remember still very vividly sitting on the porch with Miss Hume. She was a family friend and she read this book to us about three little kittens oh. and their misadventures or adventures. And I can't remember the words, but I remember the pictures and I remember the setting so well. And this book triggered that in me. Um, mm. And so compliments to you and Marion for doing that. And I think I saw something too that you, they, were, they were reading the story to this uh, New Mercy Care Academy over in Kenya. Is that right? Right. A team has just returned from there. Who right. did? There's a team that went that goes to the Mercy Care Academy, and they just returned, and they're the ones that actually took the copy of the book and read it to the children. Oh, oh my. Well, tell us a little bit more about the academy, because like you said, the proceeds go towards that academy. Well, in, in Kenya, public education doesn't actually exist, so all the schools are private, and you have to have money to go to them. Well, the poorest of the poor don't have money. In fact, they, they have trouble even, you know, feeding themselves. And so um, this school was started uh, decades ago by an Episcopal priest, Father Gilbert, uh, who has since died. But um, my friends, Wayne and Carol Brown, who live in Lynchburg, were missionaries in Tanzania. And they met Father Gilbert and caught the vision. And they have really been the ones who have kept the Mercy Care Academy alive, in my opinion. And it has grown and has turned into such a wonderful um, institution where people who have no money, they can't afford to buy uniforms and books and all the things that the private schools require, they still manage to attract 
wonderful teachers. Many of their teachers have been with them more than 20 years. And their school continues to grow till now it has about 400 students. So I am just so impressed. The little seed was planted by Father Gilbert. It was watered and weeded by Wayne and Carol Brown. And today, new people, including their daughter, Bethany, is leading the charge to keep this school afloat and to keep offering education so that the children can exit Mathari Valley, which is a terrible place to live. Mm. It, it really is garbage dump. And so we don't want people to live there. We don't want children to live there. Mm -hmm. And so education is one of the ways you get out. And along the way, the kids get to eat lunch while they're at school. And for many of them, that is their main meal of the day. They make connections with other people uh, and with their teachers. And it just produces some wonderful, wonderful students, some of whom have come back to help. So I have seen the seed grow there. And it's just a pleasure to be a part of, of helping it to grow and to continue to yield um, some just wonderful uh, people who now have the education they need in order to survive. Yes, ma'am. And, yeah. you know, I remember you so well as the CEO of the uh, Roanoke Rescue Mission and all the wonderful work you did there. So you've got another notch on your belt uh, with this book. So well done. Now, how can people go online to pre-order the book? And what, what would you, how would you refer people who want to purchase the book? Well, we have a website. We have a Facebook page. And I'm going to turn it back over to Marion because she can tell you exactly how to pre-order okay. the book. So the website is very easy. It's www.theseedandthesong, that's all one word, T-H-E-S-E-E-D-A-N-D-T-H-E-S-O-N-G.com. So theseedandthesong.com. Um, and also, if you just type in the same thing, The Seed and the Song, all one word on Facebook, uh, we have videos, we have pictures, we have stories. There's a button to click on how to order the books. Um, the books are hardback. It's 29 completely color illustrated pages inside. And $24 will get you one, which all the proceeds, again, go to the, the academy. Um, and there are, is no shipping cost within the United States either. And then there are... Uh, reduced prices if you're going to buy uh, more than one. So I believe it's two to nine copies, it's 15% off, 10 to, uh, you know, over 10, it's 20% uh, off. So anyway, it all explains all that on the website. So it's great. So the more you buy, the more you save, and there's no shipping within the United States, which these days, that's pretty that's, hard to find. It's a big deal. And then knowing where all, you know, the, the proceeds go. And what we are doing now that Bethany is back from Kenya, uh, once she kind of gets over uh, her jet lag from that, we're going to be planning a book launch, a book a celebration somewhere here in Roanoke probably at one of the libraries, but we'll have to pick a date and a time and a place and celebrate. We will have some free little handout gifts. We'll have some coloring book pages of the cover where kids can, can color the, the picture of the cover. We hope to have the, the national endorsers, maybe some of them present, as well as Lily and some of the kids who posed for the pictures. Will Lily be given autographs? Yes. Um, right. We actually have a, a special paw stamp where Lily autographs the book as well. Oh, oh that's <laughs> so nice. Is a registered emotional support dog. She's super friendly and um, loves to be petted, loves to to give love and get love, so she will definitely be there. And then also you can uh, request us to come do a, a little event or book signing at, at your church or at your organization or, you know, do a little reading. Um, Joy loves to read the book to somebody. And, well, and that's one of the ways you can really help us. Um, if you get the book and you enjoy it and you'd like to host the signing event, you can let us know on the website and we'll schedule it. Marion and I will show up with Lily <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes. And we will, we will read and sing and color and um, do all kinds of things 
to help children engage the parable of the mustard seed. There you go, Joy. And you know, uh, Joy, wouldn't it be nice if someone wrote a song about the seed in the song <laughs> and had a little video? Is there is there any way possible that could happen? What a great idea. <laughs> Sorry. What so, do you think? so Joy, I have to say, is one of the most... Uh, uh, motivational people I've ever known and, and so when we got everything kind of done and the books were being printed she looked at me and said well you know you need to write a song now <laughs> I, was like, oh, goodness. I said well I'll kind of set that aside but I did I did feel inspired one day hearing birds chirping outside my window and I don't want to be a spoiler I'll just say that birds are in the book and so yeah, so there's some whistling involved, and so we're going to, once we have the, the book launch scheduled, that video, we made a music video of the song with scenes from the book, and it's kind of made to be a children's sing-along, and I played it for little Grace the other day when I took uh -huh. them copies of the book, and she is only four right now, but she can whistle. And she whistled perfectly, so she 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 plans to be at our, our book launch, and so I'll get her up to help us. Whistle. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. <laughs> well, this is just a beautiful thing. So thank you both for enriching us and enriching the community with this with this project. I'll give you both the last word. Is there anything we've left out, or anything else you want to add as we close yeah. down? Yeah, Joy. Well, as I said, this book um, wouldn't be here without the input and help of many, many people in this community. And that's what we hope it continues to do, bring people together in positive relationships to help make the world a better place. Well said. All right. All right. Well, Anything else? Lily has something to say. Oh, oh good. Lily, if you're I was excited about so. this, can you speak? <laughs> All oh, right. Yeah. Good job. Well. I second what Lily said. There yes. you go. Right. Thank you. Lily, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yes. <laughs> very good. What a way to end it with strong. Thank you, Lily. Thank yes. you, Joy. Thank you, Marion. This is a good, good thing, and we will get this out in the air, and uh, this book is going to be good, too. Yes. Thank you for Go get them.